Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So um, I thought I'd give you a little update on my, uh, my L322 4.4 TDV8 Range Rover. Um, I've had it about eight months now and I've recently just had a couple of big bills. So I thought I'd explain you know, what happened and uh, what it felt like, you know, like when 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 the issues happened or you know, arose. Like. So I've recently just put a full set of front arms um, I got the kit from uh, All Make 4 before. I think it was about two hundred and thirty pounds for the kit. Um, I was, I was um, seemed to be getting not very precise steering, so the car was a little bit wallowy. And um, when I when uh, I looked at my tyres, I've been getting unwear, you know, uneven tyre wear on the front end. So um, one of my friends has got a garage, so I whipped her up to his garage and we put her on the ramp, and we noticed that that in in a, a bushes on um, one of the arms, uh, the straight arm. Like there's, there's there's two straight ones that come out, and then there's two ones that go on angles. The straight ones they were extremely worn, and uh, one bush has actually started breaking down to a point where it, you would say it, it was actually loose in its mountains. So um, so I bought a full kit and um, I fitted the full kit, and then I had to get a four wheel alignment. Uh, full, the full kit cost me two hundred and. Thirty pound or two hundred and forty pound, I think the full kit was. Bought the full kit from um, All Make Four before. Uh, I bought an, an is it a Delphi kit? Is it? Um, I've heard they like the OEM arms for them, so I bought that, and then it was uh, about, about forty pounds to get a four wheel alignment done. Um, so I've had that done, and I tell you what, it drives absolutely lovely now. Proper, mega precise, and uh, less wallowy. Um, drives brilliant now. Now the plan is to I'll have to buy some tires soon. Like that'll be the next thing. But I'm I'm I'll, I'll wait a month or so because I haven't decided whether I'm going to change all four or just the front two. So we'll see how that gets on. But I tell you what, it's been been a lovely, real really feels really nice now and really precise. Like then the second big bill. So I was coming out of work and uh, I finished at seven o'clock. So um, it was freezing cold. I fired the car up and I was just chatting to my mate as I was letting the uh, the windy window defrost. I put the you know the heated windscreen on, and I was just chatting to my mate while he was scraping his windscreen like in the car park while I was at work. And um, we heard a loud screeching noise, like a bit of a screeching squeal noise from the front end of the car. And as this is running, it's got um, auxiliary belts, you know, with a couple of um, idle tension, uh, the idle idle pulleys and uh, it's got like spring-loaded tension. So I heard a squeal noise and I thought, well, I've never heard that before. What's that all about? So I thought, oh, I'll best have a look at that when I get home. So uh, the noise the noise literally only happened for a couple of seconds and then it died down and I didn't hear any more noises then. Like my Range Rover's uh, 10 years old. It's a 2010 um, 4.4 TDV8. Um, but it's only done like 44,000 miles. So I bought a really low owner one with full service history, you know, the best I could afford at the time. Like, so I wasn't, I didn't have him yet that it, that it, that it need, you know, auxiliary belts yet, you know what I mean? Or like idle, idle, idle pulleys or, you know, like a tensioning kit or anything. So I never thought about, you know, changing that when I first bought it because I am quite, in my head, I do try and do things as a, as a, should we say preventative maintenance, you know what I mean? If I know it, like it needs doing, I'll, I'll do it, you know what I mean? I usually change oil and filters, you know, I'll check a few bits and pieces. Like soon, uh, say in about 20,000 miles or so, I'll get the gearbox, you know, oils changed and I'll get the diff oils changed and the transfer box oil changed, you know what I mean? Because that's just what I like like to do. I like to know things are done like, because I'm, 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 I'm like a maintenance engineer at work, you know what I mean? So that's what I, I, I have in my head, you know what I mean? I like to, like to have things done. Well, anyway, I got home and it was too dark that night to even look at it, so I left it. The next morning was Saturday morning, so I thought, I'll tell you what, I'll have a quick look at it and see what that noise was. I opened the bonnet to find the scariest thing ever I've ever seen in my life. So the auxiliary belt has like a spring-loaded tensioner, and the spring-loaded tensioner was only holding half of the belt. So the thickness of the belt, say the thickness of the belt's like 20, 20 millimeters. It was only, it only had 10 millimeters of the belt on the auxiliary uh, tensioner, you know, like the spring-loaded tensioner. So the belt had pulled forward a little bit off it. 
And I thought, oh my God, I've never seen anything like that. So, because I was so worried, I thought, I'm not using the car in case that belt pops off. I'm not using it. So, I phoned up um, All Make 4 before, and um, they put me onto a, a full uh, Land Rover kit, which comes with um, the OEM. It comes with two belts, um, auxiliary belt, which does the water pump, and another belt which does the alternator, you know, and, and whips around a few pulleys, etc. It comes with two idle rollers and it comes with a, a genuine OEM a Land Rover um, spring loaded tensioner. When this kit came, I hadn't used the car, and when I was looking at the job, it looked mega tight to do. And I do usually like to get like hands on, you know, and have a go myself, but I did think this was a bit too much for me to do. So I've got a mate who works, works for Audi, like, and um, he works on all the, you know, like the, the RS4s and the R8s and all that, you know, as his daily job, you know, so he, so he's well capable to work on, you know, like a 10 year old Range Rover, like. So I asked him, would he fit the kit for me? And he said, yeah, yeah, mate, I'll fit the kit, no problem. So um, he turned up at our house and he said, well, I'll fit it at your house. Yeah, it's no problem, I'll fit it on the drive because I was worried about the car, you know, like anything happening because I thought, that auxiliary belt tension, tensioner, if the auxiliary belt comes off, it's going to make a right mess in the engine bay, you know what I mean, whipping round. And I've heard stories on, on past cars when auxiliary belts have gone, they've took the cam belt. I know these run cam chain, but they've took half of the engine out, etc. So I thought I didn't want that to happen. So my mate Stu come up and uh, he was at it for a good few hours. I gave him, I gave him a hand on that, doing a few bits and pieces. And... Um, when we whipped the belt off and we got the tensioner off, the, the, the spring-loaded tensioner had, had actually snapped. It, it like the backing plate on it had sheared, and that like it's like um, got like a bearing, you know, which is spring-loaded with, with spring ground and stuff, which 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 like you know makes it you know like move, and that had actually sheared inside, so that had broke away. How scary is that? And this car had only done like like forty-four thousand miles, so. Anyone out there who has got a 4.4 TDV8, I would honestly say for peace of mind, go and get the kit fitted. Definitely go and get the kit fitted because it was scary what I seen. So that auxiliary belt kit cost me £280 to, like, for the kit. So that plus we got the 200, I think it was 230 or £240 for the front arms, £40 pounds for the four wheel alignments. I've spent a fair few pounds on my Range Rover, you know, in the last month or so. But, believe me, I have not fell out of love with it. I love my Range Rover, you know what I mean? I'm only 34, but, well, I wouldn't say I'm the traditional Land Rover owner, you know what I mean? But, I'm, I'm 34, but I actually love Land, I love, I, love, I, I love the badge, you know what I mean? I love what it's all about. I love the car. I've had a few Range Rovers. I've I've had loads of Defenders in the past. You know what I mean? And I, I like the way they drive. I like the way I like the way they make you feel. You know what I mean? When you get in, you get in, and it's like um, I don't know. I wouldn't say you feel successful or anything, but when you're driving it, you do feel like you know what I mean. Things aren't aren't going too bad. You know what I mean? Even though the bills are quite expensive. Please remember, these cars new were like ninety, you know, like eighty, ninety grand. So 10 year old, a few bills like that, ain't really a big deal, is it? You know what I mean? If you bought a 10 year old Bentley, which was 80, 90 grand, you know what I mean, 10 years ago, imagine what the bills for that would be, you know what I mean? So you've got to put it in, in that sort of aspect, haven't you? You just deal with it, don't you? And you just take it on the chin and you get on with it. Like, as I say, I am decided whether I'm going to put four tyres on this or just change the two. It's on their Pirelli Scorpions at the moment. And I do quite like them, but... I do quite like the idea of not being able to get stuck. You know, like, if I ever tend to, like, you know, go go on a muddy field, etc. and that, like... And I've heard these Pirelli Scorpions are absolutely rubbish. You know, on a muddy field, they'll get you stuck on a muddy field and that, like... So I was maybe considering changing all four, because I quite like the idea of having all four new tyres, and then all four tyres are going to wear exactly the same, aren't they? Instead of putting two brand new ones on the front, and I've got two, like, 50% used ones on the rear... You know what I mean? And then I'll have the uneven wear between the four tyres, etc. So I haven't really decided what I'm going to do yet. Plus, I thought I'll give it a month and save some money up, you know what I mean? Because tyres aren't cheap, are they? Especially when you buy them brand new. 
So guys, I thought I'd um, I thought I'd give you that little update on my uh, 4.4 TD V8. Um, even though I've spent out a lot this month, well, it, but should we say that in the last month, um, I still haven't fell out of love with it. I absolutely love the car. You know what I mean? It's a great car. It does our family perfect, and um, there's nothing out there that I'd change it for. You know what I mean? In the same price price bracket. So you know what I mean? Just it's staying. You know what I mean? It's staying for now anyway. Shall we say? All right, guys, hope you liked the video. Uh, give us a thumbs up if you liked the video. Uh, I know I get quite a lot of views for the Land Rover stuff, so I'm going to do a bit more land, a bit more content on my Range Rover than that. Uh, I plan on uh, painting the calipers, you know, and, and um, I've got... Um, it's due for some front brake pads soon. I know they're, I know they're quite worn, because when I, um, when I did the front arms, I noticed they were quite worn. So I might do a video on uh, doing, do, doing the um, front from brake pads and uh, painting the calipers properly, you know, show, show you how I do them properly, you know what I mean? See what you think. All right, boys, give us a thumbs up and uh, please subscribe if you're not already subscribed. And uh, I'll see you soon, all right? Take it easy, guys, all right?